I found a fun news story. This is uh, from Las Cruces, New Mexico. A Las Cruces woman was left in disbelief following a vehicle crash Sunday when the occupant of the other vehicle got out and stripped naked. (laughs) So the person whose car got hit, her name is Sky Blue. Uh, Sky Blue 22 says a woman driving a brown Honda CRV ran a red light and clipped her 2012 white Ford Focus about 9.30 a.m. After both vehicles came to a stop, the driver of the CRV exited the vehicle. Quote, the woman took her clothes off and threw a roll of paper towels down the road as she was walking against traffic. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> when did this happen? Uh, this was yesterday. Uh, uh, Blue, who had been on her way to her mother's house, said she first called her mom and then 911, but the other driver's erratic behavior scared her. Quote, I thought she was going to come and fight me. I don't know. It was. I was kind of confused as to what had happened, she said. Dan Trujillo, a spokesperson for the Las Cruces Police Department, said arriving officers took the naked woman into protective custody and for <laughs> mental health evaluations, no arrests have been made so mental health evaluations you know it's it's getting weird out there in new mexico is all i'm saying yeah I mean, when i get in a car wreck i whip my dick out that's <laughs> i thought that was protocol for wrecking a car yeah, yeah. Well, i immediately corona diaries <laughs> yeah when i get in a car wreck i immediately put my phone down that i was texting from yeah and then i get out and i'm like what did you do i mean it's <laughs> it's kind of uh the lamest version of like the fugue state from breaking bad where it's yeah. like all right well i'm kind of fucked here so i'm just gonna act as crazy as possible Mm-hmm. Strip down and then pretend it's something wrong with my brain and not that I was drunk at nine thirty in the morning. Yeah, yeah, you That's know, it's a good idea actually. It's a totally good idea. Yeah, well, it's you know, uh, in the Iliad, Odysseus saw the ships were were coming to his island, coming to Ithaca to ask him to participate in the Trojan War, and he was. He was unsure of it. He didn't really want to participate in the Trojan War, so he covered himself in shit and rode a donkey backwards to make the Greeks think, oh, well, he's he's crazy. He's useless. And, you know, I like this I, woman using classical techniques yeah. to evade uh, <laughs> the jail that she certainly needs to go to. I need to throw the Iliad on the list of books to read. Now, hey, it's time, baby. It's yeah, time. I oh, oh, I can oh, I can conduct a lesson right now. You give me yeah, 90 minutes tell. of prep. You're the I can, smart guy here. I can teach the Iliad, no, baby. I've learned that through these coronavirus diaries. They're like, you're the... The smart one. <laughs> no, well, come Rivers on. It knows exactly when you got to cover yourself in shit. Uh, no, yeah, that's that's the truth. There's gotta, a time when you got to cover yourself in shit. Yeah, but it's it's These why bees, it, right? To keep the bees <laughs> off. Yeah. <laughs> But it's why, you know, Odysseus's turnaround in the Odyssey is so great is because he was a Frady cat at the beginning of the Iliad. Mm. And he comes out the other end. Uh, the great genius of the Trojan War came up with that whole Trojan horse idea. Fucking shit. Killed Beowulf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. And then, there's, and then <laughs> don't, don't forget about Grendel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the Canterbury Tales. I know that much, what? right? <laughs> No, no, uh, that's Beowulf. <laughs> Shit, yeah, I don't know. I don't. Sorry, remember. I fucked this all up with mm. my dumb joke. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I, I like that. I like that strategy. It's a good. It's a good way to get out of a DUI. Um. How you guys been doing? Okay, I guess. Anybody piss all over themselves? Groovy most. Cool. Yeah. No, 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 pissing on myself yet. Good, but I can uh, to I'll, hear it. tell y'all up top. We didn't have a uh, a new regular episode this week because I want everybody to head over to This Is Rad and check out our two hour long discussion of Tiger King mm-hmm. uh, with oh uh, the three of us, as well as Luke Jensen, Monica Scott, and uh, Matt Burnside, Cal Clark. So we got a all tiger... different places. Yes, yeah, so, all very approved. Yeah, and that is, so that's our uh, that's our full length up this week. I'm just sending yeah. everybody over to uh, This Is Rad and. Uh, that's what we got for you this week and of course we'll have patreon later this week and all that good stuff so we got plenty of content yeah uh, if yeah. you're complaining about not having a fucking regular episode this week yeah. Yeah. fuck you well, seriously yeah. this, is, yeah. this is so much shit <laughs> well Pat- and we enjoy doing it but <laughs> if you were complaining about one no, thing no. god you have a it's mostly have, just me i'm like yeah. oh i don't know are people okay not, we're planning on doing uh for sometime next week uh pat and i have got a couple things cooking up we'll hopefully have a uh a morning radio zoo crew uh slash shock jock ep nice uh and oh, then, i love howard stern uh, yeah and mm. then uh, what breasts uh, well, my honey god. my god what you breasts? got a body built for porno honey <laughs> <laughs> you know that so <laughs> we've got that and uh and hopefully gonna be doing a hall of fame too so kind of hall of fame too what's in the hall of fame well so you know we've got this little segment where we put people in the hall of fame uh-huh. uh, people we admire things like that mm-hmm. and we started that tradition off with just a full on 
a Hall of Fame episode where we each picked just three people just to, you know, immortalize. Right. Uh, so we're going to do that with uh, with this. We haven't done that, you know, since uh, since you and Sam came on board. So OK, right. it's it's more than more than time. So you can't you, pick the UFC just bleed guy. <laughs> he's, already, he's already in, <laughs> yeah, the he's in there. <laughs> OK. Yeah. We've got uh, Shit, fan, that was my call. That was fan my man, the founder of Popeyes, uh, Joe Lewis and Max Schmeling. Like, you know, we've we've got oh. some, the, what that episode is going to require is me going back listening to all of them, then actually getting the list, because I've forgotten who all the fuck we put, oh, <laughs> we yeah. put in there. So right. I got some ideas already. Yeah. I guess it's just pick somebody who you can defend why they would be on the Hall of Fame. Uh, j- well, it's not even defense. It's like, this person is going in. You're just yeah. going to, you're you're just saying, you can't argue this it. is my pick, and here's why. You could put yourself in. Yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah. I could. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> then I could call back home and tell my parents that I'm in the Hall of Fame. That's right. Yes. Like, really? That's right. Yeah. We got fun stuff coming up, but go check out the Tiger King episode of this. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. I've still been in a jackass uh, wormhole. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, some, there's some hours of content to be taken. Did in you know the whole jackass series only has 16 episodes? Yeah, it only lasted a season. The whole thing? Yeah, three seasons. Yeah, three seasons. Damn, that's those are short. How many episodes per season? Uh, the first two had five, and then the last one had six. No shit, that's wild. Yeah. I didn't know that. And I think that's when they made the first movie. Yeah, I know. The first movie came out like a year after the show was over. I yeah. Think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that was uh, that movie came out. Uh, shout out to my friend Sean, uh, listening in Milwaukee. Came out on his birthday in 2002, and uh, yeah, we all got we uh-huh. all drank a bunch of Southern Comfort and went to the Windsong 16 and fucking watched Jackass. That sounds oh, like yeah. a good ass time. It was a real good time. Yeah, YouTube has the whole Jackass takeover on it. Eight hours. Of oh shit! Live Jackass, them hosting MTV. Oh, that's awesome. Really? Yeah, those were great. Man. Uh, dude, they are so. YouTube could be up. a real piece of shit right now and charge people for. The- <laughs> if no, they, they have what? a they have a service where you can get no ads and like YouTube Red, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what Cobra Kai is on. Yeah, uh-huh. that if you uh, want the good stuff, you gotta pay. <laughs> Those takeovers they used to do were awesome because I remember they had the Jackass one and they had a human giant one uh-huh. that was basically just every alt comedian in New York in 2008 or whatever it was uh-huh. just randomly uh-huh. showing up. And I was that was like right when I was getting really hardcore and to like invite them up and all that stuff. Yeah, so I, I mean, right, it was it. literally like Eugene Merman, it, Paul F. Tompkins, like just like yeah, every yeah, yeah. John, Mike John Benjamin. Yeah, just everybody who was there was just getting invited up to the MTV studios because those three dudes were hosting the hosting the thing for 24 hours yeah. they let him do it well that's another thing about the jack the human giant is fucking so funny yeah. but jackass i've never seen it to be honest with you oh no oh it's funny yeah, yeah, Something it's I'll have to, um to they use the, their time just to promote their friend shit like <laughs> stuff that would never be on mtv yeah it's uh, like yep. oh you should check out this band and then they fucking like, yeah, yeah. Up their <laughs> album covers and shit <laughs> oh, that's cool well, yeah they, it is cool the takeover the whole thing was they gave people access to the mtv archive so the takeover was like you could literally be like oh man there was this uh there's this episode of beavis and butthead that just killed me back in the day let's see it and they would just play it right and it not was, uh yeah that was on the human giant episode yeah. on the jackass one they're just like w- wait what's happening every single time they're on camera nobody knows they're on camera they're, <laughs> yeah, all, they're all extremely drunk fucked as fuck. up yep. steve-o is so fucked up <laughs> but he's still he's being the funniest out of all of them you can see during that why he chose stand-up comedy oh yeah he yeah, has yeah. the only potential to actually be funny out of all of them with his mouth yeah yeah did yeah. you uh did you happen to watch the Steve-O and Chris Pontius reviewing their appearance on Monday Night Raw? Oh, yeah. That shit was fucking amazing. Like, because they were... They got at, stomped out. As I suspected, drunk as fuck. Uh, uh-huh. They came on and, you know, basically they were told that they were going to be interrupted by the big heel at the time, who was Umaga, who was this giant Samoan dude with a painted face who didn't speak English. He just screamed. Right. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he spoke any words. He just go, bah! You know, <laughs> and he's this unstoppable monster, and they were supposed to let Umaga basically give him uh, each a Samoan drop, and then that was supposed to be it. Right. But Steve was drunk and wasn't paying attention to that part, so he didn't know to stay down. And of course, this is the biggest bad guy in wrestling, so if it looks like his shit is weak, that's no good. So then Umaga just legitimately beat the shit out of Steve-O. <laughs> like, starts throwing, like, MMA elbows on he's his head and those, stuff. one of those, like, old-school wrestlers that takes it way too seriously. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm just gonna hurt these guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's like, I'm just I gonna... I didn't f- get punched on for no reason. Like, I'm gonna... Yeah, <laughs> dude. to do it in yeah, full Steve-O tilt. Steve-O is, like, just... You can just see him, like, oh, no, bro, ah! 
And yeah. like, oh just shit! Oh shit! Oh ah. fucking elbows, just trying to just kill him. It's so yeah. funny, and they're both just they're both watching it. They're like, oh, "This is actually pretty good." And I was like, "They are one of the few celebrities that I've ever seen on wrestling." Where I was like, "Yeah, these guys actually, this was a good idea." Because <laughs> yeah. the whole thing is they like getting hurt, so yeah. let them get hurt. Uh-huh. Let me ask you guys this: as I could tell between the two of you, uh, you guys are fans of strongman contests. Sure, uh, you know, professional wrestling, UFC. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about just boxing? I love it. You like boxing? Yeah, I watch it all the time. YouTube okay. is a great source for boxing matches. Okay, interesting. I've never, I've never really gotten. I don't think I've ever seen a full length boxing match. No, they can I, be difficult to watch. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it's Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> he's yeah. the best boxer ever. Yeah, though. but he should. It's hard to watch because he's just, you know, he doesn't anybody... go. He doesn't go for the knockout punch. Yeah, yeah. And so it's you know, it's not the most interesting style to watch necessarily. Yeah, but yeah. he wins fights and he knocks people out sometimes. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, that's just the most the most recent one I saw. I'm I'm one of those people like I'll watch if it's like an event where it's like oh this is the one you have to see you know. Uh-huh. So I watched uh, Mayweather McGregor was the last boxing match. Yeah, match I watched that was a circus match though. Sure, but I, as I was watching it, I was like, I'm just this should be scripted. You know, this would be so much more fun if if this yeah. was. Lo- love scripted. boxing movies. <laughs> oh, I sure. love movies yeah. about boxing, but I've yeah, yeah. never been into the actual sport of boxing. Did McGregor happen after Pacquiao Mayweather? Yes. Okay, yeah. So those are the last two I watched were Mayweather fights. So I guess I'm a little like, you know, salty about boxing at the moment just because I uh, think he's kind of boring to watch. But Yeah, but you put money in his pocket. Sure, sure. Well, I didn't. My friend Connor did. So oh, thank you, Connor. Connor. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, he's he. The thing is, he's a heel. He totally sure. is the pro wrestling yeah. Absolutely. heel and that he sells his fights that way. I don't yeah. know. He's a good fighter. I can't hate on him because I like boxing a bunch and I understand what he's. That sounds so pretentious, but no, no. Yeah, when you're beating the shit out of what, people, you want the guy that talks shit. You don't want a yeah. guy who's like, "Well, it was a good match," and blah blah. blah. And it's like, no. What <laughs> he does in the ring is so impressive, too. Yeah, because I mean, hitting a guy is one thing, but not getting hit, right? Ooh, right. That's fucking. There's yeah. a reason why he still is like a successful businessman and right, shit. Because right. he's not getting pounded in the face. Yeah, yeah. Shit. What do you feel about? Uh, tell me what how you feel about WWE Brawl for All. Oh, did you watch Dark Side of the Ring? No. Oh my God. There's a yeah. So that uh, I mentioned they have that documentary series Dark Side of the Ring. They did one of uh, they did a two parter on Benoit uh, last week. They did a one on New Jack, Ooh, which was good. fucking crazy. Uh, and then this week was the Brawl for All. It was the whole like behind the scenes. Like they interviewed Bart Gunn. Uh-huh. Uh, it's incredible. Well, I mean, you know, to start with. If you if you're listening to this and you don't know, it was it's the only time that WWE has ever had a legitimate. It's essentially it was MMA basically. Sort of, yeah. Well, that was they, you were allowed to go for <clears throat> takedowns. Yeah, you yeah. Would you score c- points by doing takedowns. Yeah, it was weird because people were like wearing uh, boxing gloves, uh-huh. but you could do takedowns, uh, which is really weird. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and they the way they were scoring it was really confusing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they kind of changed the rules a little bit as the tournament dragged on, but the uh-huh. idea was whoever won this they were told would be getting a one-on-one regular match with Stone Cold, who was the champion. So that was the impetus to fight was cash prizes and a chance to actually break through and be a huge star potentially. But they chose almost exclusively mid-card guys to, to fight yeah, for the thing. Of course. And They're not going to have their superstars get actually right. beat the fuck up in the ring. <laughs> yeah. So uh, And then as the tournament dragged on, what happened was fairly predictable which is they they brought in this guy dr death steve williams who had kind of had his you know he'd had his big day in texas and everything he was good friends with jr and stone cold and they brought him in thinking like this guy's a tough son of a bitch he could probably win this thing and that'd be a good way to just kind of introduce him to the wwe audience and then he proceeds to get immediately eliminated (laughs) so there goes that turns out when you don't plan the thing out and it's uh real you can't really make stars uh Uh that easily so the guy who ends up winning it was badass Billy Gunn's former tag team partner, Bart Gunn. And first of all, everybody got like 
legitimately injured. Like Bradshaw, like it fucked his legs <laughs> well, up. He got like knocked out cold. Yeah, like it really hurt, it severely hurt a bunch of people. And then Bart Gunn wins the thing. Uh, and of course, he's not a fucking star. He's just a guy who was, you know, kind of better at this than everybody else. Right. And so instead of giving him a match with Stone Cold, they instead decide to punish him by putting him in the ring with a 350 pound Jab of the Hut looking motherfucker from Jasper, Alabama named Butterbean. Uh, uh-huh. who I is, didn't know he's from Alabama. Yeah. yeah. He's the guy who, speaking of jackass, knocks out Johnny Knoxville oh, in the department yeah. store. That God, motherfucker. God, that one's rough yeah. to watch. He yeah. gives him a major. Well, so his concussion, like, <laughs> yeah, when it's when they, fucked up. Yeah, when they're like, I don't know what they're doing with the syringe. What are they pouring into this? Because he hits his head on the... He cuts his head open when he hits On the, the glass ground. cabinet. No, he hit that glass cabinet on the way down. It's oh, like He really? hits a showcase on the way I down. I thought it was just the no. cement on he hits fucking the fucking head. No, Jesus. it's at a department store. It's like the jewelry uh-huh. showcase. He like hits his head on the corner of that shit. Oh, shit. But that guy at WrestleMania, him and Bart Gunn go at it. And of course, uh-huh. what's funny is... And Butterbean, they interviewed him, too. And he goes, yeah, man, you know, I was watching the the fights, and I was like, this guy seems pretty tough. And if he'd fought me like he'd fought them other guys, he might have win. But he tried to box me. Yeah. And you ain't going to buck and outbox me. And, and then it just cuts to him. And so, I mean, you know, Butterbean gives him, gives him, like, a good stiff one. He goes down, and he's like, and then it cuts back to him in the interview. And he's just like, I mean, you know. If he got back up, I was just going to have to put him down again <laughs> and shows yes. him getting back up. And the and hit that he does, it is brutal. It is. It's l- especially so f- brutal because the ref should have not let hit. Bart gun up. It, he yeah. was like knocked the fuck he out. He was out and his head. I mean, it was but like the ref. <laughs> they put in a guest ref, Vinny Pazzatori, uh-huh. who's a fucking like legendary <laughs> boxer. So he's not uh, yeah. going to call off the fight no. if the guy's all it, out Vinny of Pasquale, it. Yeah. Dude, the way he hits him, like it, you legit think his head is about to like spin around like the exorcist. Like it's the most unnatural <laughs> head yeah. movement. When he gets that well, hit, it's like well, this. that's just like a classic boxing KO. The head is like coming off the yeah, neck. The jaw just it so it, yeah, the Yeah, yeah. Somehow like his his head sort of like almost does like a like an undulation motion yeah. like a kind of a side to side like you're like like the jaw goes out to yeah. one side and the head goes the other way and then he just falls down and his his head hits the ropes on the way down just like bam boom and then uh-huh. done yeah. uh yeah, it, it's, <laughs> and that lasts about 60 seconds and, that then, whole they, fight. and then they fired him <laughs> they fired jesus yeah, and then they fired him like immediately after that because he's useless now he's, <laughs> he's <laughs> been, your major concussion yeah, and goodbye yeah, yeah see you later so that's what you got for that whole thing i mean it's like you know uh, yeah, but it's, he got to awful. get there's, knocked the fuck out at some, WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> there is something to to watching, uh, uh, even with watching like portions of this year's WrestleMania, where it's like watching yeah. pre-recorded and previous sports competitions back when the world was the world. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, even like reality shows. Like I would re- totally rewatch uh, Tough Enough right now. Oh yeah, well, even hey, knowing that the Miz wins, it's like, on the network. Oh, yeah. I yeah. would totally rewatch that. Yeah, there's a bunch of seasons of it. They've done probably seven or eight seasons of Tough Enough. Oh, shit, yeah. I, I, yeah, because Miz won, like, the fourth or fifth season. The first guy to win was Maven. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I remember, I I remember the one where Maven yeah. wins. I, I watched wrestling still a bunch then. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I, that's when I, yeah, that's when I was watching it, too. He was shitty from the get-go. Yeah. He never yeah. had a chance. No. That's the, is that the season with the Boogeyman? Where the Boogeyman's in the ring and the drill. Remember. Okay, so Boogeyman, who would eventually get signed by WWE as the Boogeyman, before he was the Boogeyman, he was training for one of those seasons of Tough Enough or trying out for it. Somebody is yelling at him and they go, How old are you? And he goes, I'm 30 years old. How old are you? 30. How old are you? 30. Don't lie to us. How old are you? 30. You lying to us? 30. What's your license say? 30. What does your birthday say in your license? My birthday says... Read it to me. 7-15-64. Yes, right. I am 40. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's but he eventually, he eventually had a great run in the WWE as the boogeyman, and all he had to do was uh, paint his face and eat worms. Yeah. <laughs> you That's know? what people pay to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eat those worms. Yeah. See, that's why I like it more than boxing, because you get this, this sort of uh, legitimacy. You're right, yeah, of a yeah, painted yeah. man eating worms. Sure, so, yeah. This is this is a true contest. Yeah, it's a real contest. It's not some yeah boxers, some fake boxing match. Boxers <laughs> used to paint it themselves. Oh, they would yeah. write www.internationalgambling.com yeah, on golden, their fucking back. <laughs> Goldenpalace.com. <Yeah. laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. What, we got any uh, any any roundups? Any any? Uh, I wanted to play a video clip, or it's just an audio <laughs> clip from the Jackass Takeover. They were taking calls from people 
and uh, having like a webcam segments where people would just record a question on their webcam and like send it in. Uh-huh. So uh, most of the phone calls were terrible. Like they just didn't. It was just like I said, they're all drunk <laughs> yeah, and confused yeah. the whole time. They didn't sure. work out. So the webcam parts were a little better. Um, this one is like, uh, I don't know. She looks like a teenage girl and she's, uh, it starts out with her describing all the jackass merch she has. Okay. And I'll just play the clip. So much merchandise. I have the poster, I have the box set, all the movies, this jackass t-shirt, the high top chucks and the low top slip-ins. Um, as a big fan, I just wanted to say, is there going to be a jackass three? Other than that, I want to say you guys are hot. I'm such oh. a big fan. My friends call me Party Girl because whenever I hear the Party Boy song, I just have to dance and take some off. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She says they call me Party Boy because every time I hear the Party Boy song, I have to dance and take it all off. Take yeah. something off. Take something yeah. off. Okay. All right. Uh, might be the pants. Might be the shirt. I just want to say you guys are hot. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's you know, it's so funny that those guys are considered attractive. Yeah, well, dude, in their they're, they're, day, yeah, they you know. yeah. There, well, there's. I mean, there is a a certain you know section of the population. They're all female and about our age. Actually, they're not even all female. Yeah. I'm sure they have a you know huge gay following as well but they were shirtless skateboard dudes on tv so we're mm-hmm. jumping in shit though <laughs> Dude, hey man <laughs> i guess they're just famous and rich <laughs> yeah i mean they're pretty athletic i mean they were stuntmen they're professional I mean. skateboard, stuntmen. Yeah. skateboard guys yeah I mean, except for preston lacy <laughs> yeah but i'm dude i'm sure yeah. preston lacy got uh got some dude i think i saw him walking down the street since i've been here really dude. i swear to god i, I think love, i saw him i would love to see preston yeah. shorter than He's you think from I think he might be from one of them's from Alabama. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. It might be him. I'm not sure. I can mm. see that. Um, maybe he's from <laughs> Missouri. I'm I'm not sure. Um, so yesterday I had talked about this. I had found some. You guys are familiar with the song "Oxycontin" by Little White. The Little White song that I know is uh, "I'm Getting Fucked Up," which I love. All his music was about doing drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. It's one of the only hip hop songs that I know of that really makes good use of the harpsichord. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> there was like a thing where it was like it was an urban legend that he was dead for like at least a year. Oh, really? I never. It just makes sense. It's one of those things that if you heard that, you'd be like, "Yeah, yeah checks out." You wouldn't even feel bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the chorus is where it really starts it. That's a lot of, 11 that's a lot of You know, I've, I've never taken them, but I can imagine that's a, a, a quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I I think I had some for my wisdom teeth or something, and yeah, one will do you. Uh huh. Prescription wise, one will do. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my god. All okay. right, here comes the chorus. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take a chill pill. Okay. Yeah, I remember this I've song. Heard this song. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I was listening to this song on YouTube. <laughs> and as you listen to songs on YouTube, there's yeah. always great comments. Oh yeah, I bet this one has some fucking great ones. Yeah, I just got a couple of them. Okay. One, I think one of my favorites was when I was younger. My dad played this. <laughs> <laughs> wait, <That is. laughs> wait for the second part. <laughs> when I was younger, my dad played this, and now I'm 14 and still bumping. Uh, <laughs> he was yeah. playing the song to like his fucking 10 year old. Wow, hell yeah! <laughs> well, this song, when did this come out? This probably came out in 2005, 2006, 2003. Oh, oh, three? Yeah, so that makes sense. Okay, so that means his dad was bumping it when he was like one, and now he's an adult. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a big man now. He's a big boy. Jeez Louise. You want to fucking, yeah, come on, big man. You want to fucking talk shit? Get <laughs> <laughs> your ass beat back down. Okay, and here's another oh, one that's just uh, insane ravings of a madman. Okay. Oh, the memories. First, the government took the Oxycontin. Then the government <laughs> took the Roxy Blue Perk 30s. What? Now all that's left is heroin, which is causing bigger problems and suffering pain patients. And that's inhuman. K 
can smoke and drink though. Hmm, messed up. Legalize it all. Bottom line, where this where there's a will there's a way and the pleasure is so amazing. Once an opiate opiate addict always one. They got us permanently hooked. You never go back to normal once you know what feels good. Like, I can't wait until the day (laughs) Oxy floods the streets again. One day the cartel will make Oxy in a lab, pure Oxy, and it will be amazing. Oh, my God. The true meaning of Oxy, pure Oxy. (laughs) This guy is fucking great. I'll tell you, we all all have, like, you know, our hopes and dreams for what's going to happen after we're let back out into the world after yeah. this virus uh-huh. is over. And this yeah. guy just wants Oxycontin to be flowing say, yeah. <laughs> from every spigot. I mean, yeah. In the, in the lung of every child. <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, Pure Oxycontin. Okay, and let's continue. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, this is great. Uh... <laughs> They'll make Oxy in a pure lab. Oxy and it will be amazing. The true meaning of happy hippie. A lot of stoners don't know. Hippie <laughs> means an opiate addict. Every time he says addict, he spells it like attic. Oh, like, like the thing above your like house. Like living in an attic? Yeah. yeah. This kid is in his parents' house. He has been in and out of jail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Hippie meant opium addict. Opium was the happy plant. The poppy's not marijuana. Not at all. And then there's, oh, it's a plant. Well, so is the opium poppy. And so is mushroom. Well, a fungus. But yeah, all the natural, right? Pot heats. What is your argument? Legalizing it. All the drug wars making things worse now. Streets are all fentanyl. Thanks to the unnecessary pill shortage. There is, is this millions a different of people. Post? No. This is the same post. Yeah. Of course. Someone needs to get Tyler just... set up with a license plate printing <laughs> right. machine like immediately. Yeah, I was just writing a fucking novel. Yeah. Legalized with it... the, o- the oxy poppy <laughs> and the, the marijuana pills. and Yeah, the just... legalize it guy with oxy. Yeah. Drugs, drugs, drugs. Yeah. If oxy will be flowing from every street corner. And sweet <laughs> oxy, pure oxy in the labs. Dude, I and almost. The great part is it's just on this song. Too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which makes him seem so much cooler. <laughs> this is my favorite little white song this is uh yeah, f- this it. is fucked up and uh notice the harpsichord it's very pleasant it's a pretty diverse up. array of topics he, he likes to cover three six mafia up. loves to use weird I'm instruments like this. yeah oh, man yeah. well yeah, they're on does. this i think yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. oh i could tell the second the beat started cranberry vodkas mockers Cranberry oh, yeah. vodka. Me and my friends used to say makers, marker, cranberry, and vodka drinks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's roll. Love this song. Oh yeah, this is a good one. This yeah. is a classic. Three Sipping on some scissor is the is the classic. To Absolutely. me, that that is like the in, indisputable, <laughs> like one of the greatest rap songs ever oh, ever made. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like uh, Lil White. Wow. Yeah. True legends in the game. Three, it is. Months. I hope he's doing well during these trying times. <laughs> you know he's got a plethora of underlying conditions. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. That poor guy. One Stay them. inside, Lil White. Dude. I'm sure his entire central nervous system has just been vibed out too hard. So, Jeez, you know. Yeah. You know, I don't. Yeah, that's the worst persona to take as a rapper. <laughs> that you're just the fucked up guy all the time. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't bode well. I mean, no, even like, like the like most this... legendary one, like old dirty bastard, maybe. Right, right. The the most legendary, like I'm fucked up all the time, rapper. Right, but you also, in order for that persona to work, you have to also be a genius. Yeah, uh, and he too. was an incredible MC. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it. there are plenty of like famous rich rappers who are not that good, but are highly successful oh, yeah. there are no mediocre rappers whose persona was the drugged out guy well that's the thing about little john that's interesting yeah, yeah. is he is actually very smart like oh, god yeah that that damn hip-hop evolution of his was it's it's fascinating yeah, right because he's like so fucking like yeah he's like I, it's not even rap it's like it's it's like a chant i do chants yeah yeah but like he fucking was the the top dog in it yeah. for like fucking and he created he carved his own niche still i mean shit how long ago was that song shots like oh dude six years ago maybe dude i mean yeah is one of the biggest songs Huge. of that decade and like i was respecting that too where he was like you know i used to as a skateboarder and like i listened to minor threat and shit yeah, and i yeah. was just like yeah like he's just smart like yeah, he's yeah. just fucking knew how to manipulate pop music right right but yeah his yeah the yeah you, you can't be a little white uh who's just no. okay at rapping and be be the oxycontin guy it's funny to listen to him talk about getting fucked up for <laughs> forever for every song he's ever been on but oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you just think like yeah you hear he might be dead and you're like eh, that checks out yeah mm. i think he was snorting oxycontin yeah heavens <laughs> heavens to murgatroyd <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cranberry vodka. Okay, Just that, that song's good. Oh, that harpsichord. Mm. <laughs> Very, oh, very chamber. Very, very, yeah, uh, chamber very music chamber. Of them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I found another fun comment of underneath the uh, the little white oxycotton video. Back when I abused Opana and would sit and melt into my couch listening to this shit, it still oh gives God. me flashbacks. Four this, years sober, dude. <laughs> this reminds, me, dude. This is the best. Like, <laughs> like listening to people who are former or current burnouts comment on this. Oh, there's another one. LOL, I sang this song when I was a teen and then grew up doing the shit. Thankfully, I'm six years clean. Drugs feel amazing. I feel the warm, fuzzy <laughs> feeling and the withdrawal whenever I hear this song. Memory lane, man. Whoa, everyone's like, this is like, they're like, this is them fondly remembering being a drug addict. Oh, <laughs> this yeah. is song. There's a bunch of them, too. Someone just quoted the line, 11 Percocets just entered me, and then there's a comment underneath, LMAO, that's nothing. <laughs> 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 11 what? fuck yeah oh god the most dangerous thing to mix with opiates is soma <laughs> the one time <laughs> the one time i mixed soma and oxymorphone was the only time i felt close to death i've mixed opiates with benzos and other things with no problem i'm glad they took that shit off the market that must have killed a bunch of people <laughs> <laughs> i like i like <laughs> I like no, that. Like now they're like, man, I don't do that shit anymore, man. Now, now I just drink a twelve pack of beer, like yeah. I, at night. I don't Absolutely. do, I don't do pills anymore. Yeah, I mean that's what you got to do. Oh yeah. man, trade it out. Ta- trade the yeah to chase the demon. <laughs> just takes me back to the days of green OC eighty pills. I remember you used to be able to grind them up and snort them, <laughs> and then they changed to OP eighty, and they were like a gel pill. That was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you're the reason they did that. Oh, God. LOL, and we wonder why everyone is on drugs now. I was listening to this song in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> this is outstanding. Act- oh, played this ma- for me. <laughs> God, these are great. Yeah, that's... <laughs> This is this is a new segment. We got to find YouTube comments for oh, a dude. jam of the day. I fucking dude, yeah. see them all the time. I listen That's to a good music segment. on YouTube almost exclusively. That's a like g- dumb dumb stoners do. Oh man, yeah. Um, and <laughs> I like rap music, as you guys know. Sure. I always know when I found like a super gritty gangster rap song because people post things like "We played this at my brother's funeral." <laughs> Jesus, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, this is that real shit. Or I oh, remember man. listening to this on the r- radio in prison while I was rolling up joints and shit like that. <laughs> Just like, whoa. What? <laughs> this comment, same song. When this came out, I had nine doctors in Broward County. <laughs> <laughs> Checking on you every day. No, meaning he was going to nine different doctors to get drugs, man. Yeah. Oh, getting scripts see, from nine different doctors. I would be such a rube in these scenarios. <laughs> well, if you need money for your cars, I don't know. Nine doctors. You must be really sick, man. You must be really sick. <laughs> Ninth grade, this song was always playing at parties when I'd see some dudes dealing pills. <laughs> then kids didn't make it that far in life. <laughs> this is them crazy. kids. But this song still jams. This is outstanding, man. I'm just like skimming the surface here. I haven't even gone deep in the comments. My God. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I bet a... sipping on some syrup might have some crazy one. Any song about lean, probably, because <laughs> lean's just the same sort of yeah. prescription grade it, heroin. It's got to be true, like shithead music. Well, that's what I was gonna but... say. This was this was the right way to go because yeah, like sipping on some syrup was like pretty mainstream. Like yeah. this is a bit off the beaten path. So you're gonna get the real fucking yeah. heads in here. So. That's yeah. true. Whew, that's outstanding. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I'm finding it right now. I'm gonna look at some of these because these this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube comments, dude. <laughs> I listened to a podcast where the like uh, creator, like co-creator of Tosh.0 is on there a lot, uh-huh. and he would always like remember when YouTube had the top comment. Yeah, yeah. He'd be like we would write jokes for those YouTube videos, and the top comment was always funnier than anything <laughs> we could come up with. <laughs> My fave relapse song, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! YouTube people are so fucking funny. Oh yeah, yeah. YouTube is uh, you know that's that's the mask off people. They don't give a fuck. Well, it's also also, like, you know, you have 10 people in a writer's room. You have fucking 60 million people in this writer's room. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I like this one guy. He's he wrote, commented on the song. I can't listen to this. Brings back memories of addiction. There's so <laughs> many like that. This this guy says doesn't sound as good as it did ten years ago. I don't know. Maybe the opioid epidemic was kind of a buzzkill for this song. The beat is dope though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God, the opioid epidemic killed a lot of people. <laughs> the man is a walking pharmacy <laughs> for one like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god anyway uh, okay yeah anyway if you're <sighs> just bored looking for stuff to do during coronavirus <laughs> just go on youtube i'm gonna i'm gonna try also to... a fun thing to do th- that's in that vein go on songmeanings.com and <laughs> look at some of those. oh the, and i used to do a joke about the best one ever is the people debating over what the line uh, real G's move in silence like lasagna means. <laughs> it's the funniest shit. So there's, I forgot what song it is. Little, it's a little Wayne lyric. Yeah. Real G's move in silence like lasagna. Like Obviously lasagna. meaning there's a silent G in the word lasagna. Very clever. Yes. People don't fucking know that. So it's literally all these people being like, yeah, because you know when you uh when you eat lasagna, it doesn't you know it doesn't it's not crunchy. It's just kind of like you know you just swallow it down. Yeah, like, kind of shit it out really easily. <laughs> and it's just like it's the fun. I had a. a it wasn't even a bit it was literally i just said that exactly and then just read some comments on stage yeah, it was yeah. uh it was working great uh, uh and then i had a whole whole riff on that so anyway yeah. can't wait to come back yeah mm. that was fun that was fun <laughs> oh remember when we all did stand up i don't miss i know it. yeah i don't miss it as much as i thought i would i'm stand over up. it at this i'm over missing it i go through point. peaks and valleys now i'm starting to miss it I miss it, but I also have this, uh, you know, kind of um, ever-present anxiety that when it does come back, it's just gonna suck for like a year. It's gonna be way worse. It's gonna suck for so and, goddamn long. Well, think about the benefits and the. I mean, it's gonna suck. Yes. Yeah. But is it gonna suck in a way that you don't feel like? <laughs> no, honestly, what I'm genuinely thinking yeah. is when they let us all out of quarantine, I'm just just not gonna. I'm gonna continue to not do it for like six months just to not have to hear. Well, everybody's goddamn quarantine material fix six months isn't gonna fix that no it's no. gonna be like two years <sighs> yeah of people, at least it's uh, people are gonna yeah. talk about this shit forever i know you just gotta you just gotta jump back into the fray i guess I'm going you do to, yeah. i'm going to but you just gotta i mean the thing that scares me the most is they're gonna give everybody the go ahead to go back to normal when shit's still fucking oh there's that was virus out i forgot know? that's that's uh that was the last uh oh, i had two i had two stories i wanted to touch on briefly one of them uh so the pennsylvania House of Representatives readies legislation to reopen businesses. Uh, Jesus Christ. This is from today. Uh, the Pennsylvania House of Representatives is working on a measure that would allow businesses to reopen, uh, overturning Governor Tom Wolf's order to close businesses that aren't life sustaining to slow the spread of coronavirus. Uh, the the man, le- that was the man who pulled GameStop's business license. Oh, good for him. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So, all right. Well, at God. least at least there's one politician I can fucking get it, behind right it's now. It's like that that like just slides. Because like, we just got, yesterday we got pancaked with bad news. Like, yeah, like hell three yeah. major things. Yeah, and like. Yeah. And like, yeah, th- that kind of shit just slides under it where it's like in some states are even letting people <laughs> back out. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad I don't live there. Yeah. I just feel bad for people that do. But, that sucks. Uh, yeah. Some good news I, I found, though. So uh, this is from the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Atlanta police are searching for a suspect that they say stole a trailer full of Jack Daniels in <laughs> southeast Atlanta last week, according to a police report. Uh, <laughs> hey, why not? Uh, yeah. You know, it's uh <laughs> <laughs> getting crazy drunk at home right now yeah but the guy stealing an entire truck full yeah. of jack daniels is awesome i, I mean yeah I, a very, lot of people a lot of people are doing shit like that just to feel alive well, right yeah, now. yeah well it's very good fellas you know it's very uh, good fellas <laughs> mixed with like a little dukes of hazard yeah in there. yeah a driver working for a tennessee-based trucking company dropped off the shipment of tennessee whiskey at the its con global trailer yard on march 28th an employee there told police that he checked the trailer out of the yard without asking the unknown driver for his personal information mm. so somebody just walked up in a trailer yard and just stole a truck full of whiskey <laughs> jesus uh, love it <laughs> the balls that Jack Daniels himself would have. Yeah. Right? I mean, hell yeah. The employee also said that the man did not appear to be suspicious in any kind of way. What does that mean? <laughs> he, <laughs> yeah, he was, I, I was about to say, he was blowing bubble gum and whistling with his hands in I his pocket. Hey, mister, is that truck filled with Jack Daniels whiskey? <laughs> I'm too young to drink it. I don't know. <laughs> the semi-truck was found April 2nd in DeKalb County. Uh, Atlanta police said the majority of the cargo was gone when the vehicle was found. So good on them. They got the truck back. Grab and, as much as you can carry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quick, get all the Jack Daniels. 
Let's go. Drink, yeah, drink what you can now, then carry the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know good. they're slinging bottles of Jack right now. Yeah. Don't want to go to the store, huh? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Hit him with the convenience charge. Yeah, <laughs> robbing from the rich <laughs> whiskey <laughs> companies and giving to their immediate relatives. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I did. I did have one other just fucking weird story. Uh, this is from the UK. Hull shop owner exasperated as customers call every day to buy balloons for parties. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> the owner of Hullabaloon, which get the fuck out. Uh, the owner of Hullabaloon says people don't understand what a <laughs> sounds like a sustainable, <laughs> sustainable business model. <laughs> Uh, Hullabaloon, located next to Gadzuki's birthday <laughs> cake factory. <laughs> a whole balloon business owner. That's a good economy if they're fucking <laughs> shit like that's open. <laughs> big Smiles Office Park. Yeah, Big Smiles Office Park. <laughs> Elaine Hakim, who runs the Hullabaloon shop in, uh, in Beverly Road, says that she has diverted calls from the business to her home to help any uh, customers who had existing bookings. But she says that she has since received multiple calls every single day from people trying to make new bookings for balloons to be delivered to birthday parties and other events. She said, quote, the last thing I wanted was to close up shop. I don't want them to think that I've put the shutters up and ignored them. But mm. people keep ringing and ringing and ringing. People have been asking if they can have balloons delivered. And I'm just thinking, what planet are you on? <laughs> uh, right. So I want to get a, a bunch of balloons that say, happy birthday, mate. <laughs> Can you do that for me? Is this for a, like a, a family member or anything? No. No? No. Is it for her? It's for me. Oh. <laughs> it's my birthday. And, and you wanted how many balloons? Oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 150. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a lot. Um, it does, doesn't it? Just for you? Are you quarantined with your family? Or is just no. <laughs> <laughs> just me and a flat and a dog. That's all. <laughs> Uh, Miss Akeem says she uh, she'd put up several posts on the Facebook's business page to let prospective customers know <laughs> that they were not trading. This is her quote at the end: "People just don't seem to know what an non-essential business is. It's senseless." So, well, then close up. Well, no, she did. That's what okay. she's saying. Like she she basically has just she's got the business line uh -huh. attached to her phone at home. The uh -huh. Business is closed. It's literally just so she can like manage like, uh, right, bookings yeah. and stuff. And she's saying she's pissed because people are calling every day and being like, oh, "I have some balloons." G but no, G <laughs> good on her to be like, "This isn't an essential business." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm closed. I just have this to tell people whose birthdays are in October yeah. that I might be able to still do it. Jesus, <laughs> when's the last time you went to someone's birthday party and they're like, "Where are my balloons?" <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, I don't know. England so much more quaint than uh, than it's, here. I think it's for children but who are the parents being like i can't have a birthday party without balloons yeah <laughs> johnny's gonna disown me yeah. <laughs> next you're gonna tell me i can't have a clown <laughs> like it's corona the clown i mean uh, <laughs> 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 your nightmares are real <laughs> uh, all right i had one more thing oh Some, yeah okay. a couple news stories yes breaking yes. news really these all happened in the past 12 hours, and they're also all from our neighborhood. Oh, my God. Is this Citizen? This citizen. Yeah. And Hell I just yeah. got, as soon as I said that, I got another alert from Citizen. Oh, God. So now we have five of them. Mm -hmm. uh, 6.30 a.m., we got a suspect <laughs> wielding a kitchen knife. Okay. Yeah. He was apprehended. <laughs> it's beautiful morning. Uh, around, <laughs> around 8 a.m. <laughs> it's still morning. Yeah. 8 a.m., we got man assaulting people <laughs> with vehicle. <laughs> What does that mean? Jesus. I guess he's what? running people over. You ever, you ever play the game Twisted Metal? <laughs> say, it's Grand Theft Auto. It's a little bit like that, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. You fucked up my car. Yeah. <laughs> That's what CJ oh, no, was. homie. Yeah. <laughs> then we make it to about 1130. What does Ray Liotta say? He's like, don't be a hero. <laughs> hey, don't be a hero. Yeah. <laughs> we got an 1130 report of an assault with knife. Uh -huh. This is this is the guy from 6 a.m. Certainly, he's still yeah. out it. Now that he about. was apprehended, oh, okay. while I was just taking a walk around the neighborhood, as I've been told we're allowed to do, <laughs> yeah. with the mask. Yeah, uh, I got a citizen app that said, uh, 400 feet away from you, machete wielding <laughs> person." Well, that was the next one I was gonna <laughs> say. Yeah. Just taking a little jaunt, you know, 400 feet. Because even right now, it was only a quarter mile away. Yeah, <laughs> like it's a tornado, like yeah. slowly moving towards us. I yeah. mean, ah, just like, like <laughs> yeah. a Tasmanian devil with a machete man, coming out of the side. Man, of it. Arm, 
<laughs> man armed with machete. And right now, we got a fist fight at 826 Lucille Avenue. <laughs> oh, good. Christ. So <sighs> fucking Google Maps wow. that. My Find out Lord. where the fist fight happened. You know what? When things get so bad in the past twelve hours, when things get so bad, it's just comical. Where it's like, even if you want to go outside, there's a crazy guy with a machete <laughs> that will shit in your mouth. It's just like you know. One time, <laughs> my ex girlfriend wouldn't let me walk from here to Jack in the Box because there's a citizen after said <laughs> man with a samurai sword. <laughs> oh, I remember that one. I, lo- I love that it's all blade, <laughs> That's what I'm bladed you. weapons, yeah, yeah. and blunt objects and shit. It's like there's gonna be some guy assaulting, you know, like uh, holding up a store with a stapler or some shit. I mean, <laughs> like I said before, as as the the thing goes on, the melee weapons are gonna get crazier and crazier, and eventually it's gonna be like man wheel a medieval style mace yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh there's a man on horseback with a fucking uh, lance yeah it's colonel mustard with the fucking machete in the <laughs> dining room or you know i don't know who knows the fuck's going on out there so it was nice to take a walk though jesus i don't care i don't care if there's a fucking guy running at me with like fucking two you know <laughs> butter knives english broadswords <laughs> yeah with two english broadswords and he's shitting as he runs it's just like it's nice to be outside for a half a second dude you got Gotta go outside. It fucks dude. you up too much. To stay I mean, inside uh, your house dude, all the time. Luke's the, shout out to Luke's mom. By the way, we got some masks. Yes, yes. Thank and, you uh, so much. That was the nicest thing ever. And uh, she it's been a- to the goods from the woods. Shout out to shout out Luke's to Luke. mom. Hey, there's Luke. Hey, Mia Fujimoto. Hi, there it oh, is. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that. Yeah. So yeah, Luke lives right next door, so he can. Uh, he hears all of this. Yeah, he hears everything through the walls. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that's so. Yeah, we got we got masks. <laughs> is the point, dude? We got. Uh, this was four minutes ago. I got to go rush and see this fist fight. At least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're late for. Speaking of boxing, we're all fans of boxing. And we're fans of pugilism. Yeah. We got to go see this fist fight. Yeah, in the I car. like how they won't just call it a rumble. It'll be like <laughs> group fight. It's like it's a rumble. I've yeah. never if I've ever heard of a rumble. That's a rumble. Yeah, that's a rumble. Uh, but yeah. So anyway. Uh, but yeah, is that that's a damn episode? I think so. Yeah, all I mean, right. It seems like it seems like an episode to me. Hell yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah go uh, go listen to the uh, the Tiger King episode of This Is Rad. That's our uh, that's our our big normal somewhat normal weekly episode. And yeah. Uh, yeah, find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rivers Langley. Find me at the East Hollywood Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter and Instagram Carter underscore Glasscock. And yeah, definitely at, at one of these rumbles that are coming up. I'm gonna have front row seats. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, of course you can uh, find us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash the good pod five bucks a month gets you access to a bonus show every week as well as a wow. shout out on the regular show as well as sam harder's personal phone number yeah, so right. you're gonna need that during these times <laughs> you want right. his info you want it you gotta get sam's info and uh last thing i want to say before we uh before we head out r.i.p to john prine man yeah that shit uh fucked me up John Prine, I saw for the first time in 2003. My dad was a big fan of his, uh, and still is, and uh, kind of got me into it. And we went and saw him at the Davis Theater in Montgomery, and it was the I think it was the week after Johnny Cash had passed away. Yeah. And so John Prine, who I guess you know sort of knew Cash a little bit uh, tangentially, saying I still miss someone, which was awesome. And I didn't see him again until 2016. I saw him at the Greek Theater with Jason Isbell and Amanda Shires, and mm-hmm. it was just fucking amazing. So uh, yeah, R.I.P. to John Prine. If you aren't familiar familiar with John Prine, he made it really easy to get into him because you just buy his first record and it's perfect. Like front uh, to back. Perfect. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, he was a, a very visible figure in East Nashville. Oh, yeah. And he was like one of those, like he's a legendary person, yeah. uh, obviously, but he like a lot of people knew him personally. And he oh, was, yeah. He was very like, uh, it, it, it was, he touched a lot of people yeah. who lived in Nashville, and it's a big loss for the community. Well, I know and, the, the like, tour later in life, him, and this is uh, just one of those things like, goddamn, you could be a fly on the wall in this room. Mm. Uh, him and Sturgill Simpson became really good friends and got an office together, and we just go up there yeah. and write together every day. I'm like, Jesus crazy, Christ, man. that sounds incredible. So, yeah. anyway, this is uh, Lake Marie. We'll see you next time. Yeah.
years ago along the Illinois-Wisconsin border. There was this Indian tribe. They found two babies in the woods, white babies. One of them was named Elizabeth, and she was the fairer of the two. A while the smaller and more fragile one was named Marie. Having never seen white girls before, and living on the two lakes known as the Twin Lakes, they named the larger and more beautiful lake, Lake Elizabeth. And thus, the smaller lake that was hidden from the highway became known forever as Lake Marie. We were standing Standing by a peaceful white Standing by a peaceful white Many years ago, I found myself talking to this girl who was standing there with her back turned to Lake Marie. The wind was blowing, especially through her hair. There was four Italian sausages cooking on the outdoor grill. <laughs> Man, it was sizzling. Many years later, we found ourselves up in Canada trying to see about marriage and perhaps catch a few fish. Whatever came first. That night she fell asleep in my arms, humming the tune to uh, Louie Louie. Oh, baby. We gotta go now. We were standing, standing by a peaceful white, standing by a peaceful white. dogs were barking as the cars were parking. The loon sharks were shocking and the knocks were knocking. Practically everyone was there in the parking lot by the forest preserve. The police had found two bodies in the woods. Nay, naked bodies. And their faces had been horribly disfigured by some kind of sharp object. Saw it on the news, you know, in a black and white video. You know what blood looks like in black and white, don't you? Shadows. Shadows. That's what it looks like. All the love we shared between her and me, that is. Man, it was slammed. Slammed up against the banks of Oh, Lake Marie Lake Marie Who was standing Standing that peaceful water Standing that
Baby's record. Cha-cha-cha.